This presentation will look at the study of hair and specifically the science of hair as it can be used in forensic investigation. Here's some of the goals for um, your ability to understand and distinguish these pieces. So currently, forensic science can do the following. Uh, determine if two examples of hair are from the same person and um, take a look at how hair can be used um, in terms of its medullary index. Uh, now, hair is a form of class evidence. Like we've talked about before, it cannot be pinpointed so that one person is the only owner of that, pos that hair that was found at the crime scene. But rather, there are characteristics about that hair that we can look at microscopically and determine if it would be possible for that hair to belong to that person, along with a, a subgroup of people that may have those same characteristics. DNA can be found in certain situations, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Here are some um, progressions of the historical evolution of the use of hair and hair analysis. You see that um, the, it's a long-standing history beginning in the 1800s. So whether you've thought about this or not, you are a mammal and uh, all mammals have uh, some form of hair, some greatly reduced, uh, but your hair is functioning for you uh, to help you re regulate body temperature, decrease friction, and also protect against sunlight. Its structure is basically comprised of three components. You can think of this like a pencil. And so where the graphite of your pencil is, that would be the medulla. And that's the part that generally provides pigmentation for the hair. The cortex is going to be like the wood around the graphite of the pencil, kind of internally. And then the outside would be like that yellow paint of the, the pencil, which is the cuticle. Now, in human hair, there is this uh, shingled roof kind of look to the cuticle when you look at it under a microscope. And then you see the cortex being this um, more inner part here and the medulla being the pigmented uh, strand throughout. Now, you may not have a medulla in your hair. I do not. And so it just varies um, not only by your... Um, genetic heritage, in other words, what part of the world that you're from, but also individual to individual. This is a cross-section of a hair that is embedded in the skin, and you can see how um, the section here where the root of the hair uh, originates within the skin is called the papilla, and it's interesting that the um, only nuclear DNA, that's the DNA that is the instruction manual for building you, so your whole body plan. The only nuclear DNA that can be found in a hair fall, in a hair is actually in that root where the capillary connects and that's in the papilla. So if your hair just falls out passively, you are less likely to have that root. But if the hair is yanked out, it's more likely to have some of that nuclear DNA in the follicle, which will of course be a type of individual evidence rather than just the class evidence. There is also some mitochondrial DNA that might be able to be extracted from the shaft of the hair, but of course that mitochondrial DNA will just link you to your maternal lineage rather than giving your whole DNA instruction manual. All right, so here's some more information about the cuticle. Again, that outermost layer, as well as the cortex inside of that. Note that the cortex does contain a good bit of pigment, so it is possible for your hair to have pigmentation, even dark pig pigmentation, uh, without actually having a medulla. Now, these are the different types of medullas, and you can see these among different individuals, um, all of which being human. There's that m amount of variation. This is a continuous medulla, interrupted, looks like a dotted line. Fragmented or segmented can be variable in the um, types of dots and, and line interruptions. This would be an example of a solid medulla and then no medulla. And actually, um, medullas can vary by ethnic group as well. Um, and animals tend to have uh, very distinct looking medullas. And one of the things you guys will be doing in lab is looking at the different types of medullas and trying to match them from dog, horse, pig, I've got all kinds. In addition to the medulla looking different um, from one person to another. 
the different types of hair on the body can also have different characteristics. So for example, head hair versus eyebrow hair, pubic hair, things like that. So the cycle of a hair um, goes through three stages. The first stage is the anagen stage, which is the active growth stage. The second stage is the catagen stage. Hair is growing and changing. The third is the telogen stage where the follicle actually becomes dormant and um, it will begin the process of um, being released then from the follicle where it has connected into the skin. There are also some signatures of treatments such as bleaching can actually disrupt the scale pattern on the cuticle removing the pigment as well as dyes and then this goes back to the uh, the different um, differences in among ethnicities and then here we see the differences animal hair and human hair in general animal hair will have a much thicker medulla and there's something called a medullary index, which is a, a measurement based on the thickness of the medulla. Here you see the varying medullary indexes. Uh, you have the cattle hair, which, which has the thickest human hair, which has generally um, an index of 0.33 or less. You also have a difference in the type of cuticle. Humans tend to have more of the imbricate, and then animals can have uh, the spinous or coronal cuticle on the outside. All right, so transitioning into the use in, in investigation, um, macroscopically, without a microscope, we can look at things like length, color, curliness, um, and then use microscopy to show things like whether it's been treated naturally or, in, or unnaturally, whether it has a medulla, what the, the medulla type is, and so forth. Notice that um, a blood test can often um, determine blood type and then um, of course, DNA analysis would be um, the best end um, in the analysis of the hair if it has um, a bit of that root um, from the scalp or wherever it was in the body. We will be looking at hair microscopically throughout the year and generally we'll use just a slide and um, maybe place a cover slip on top. Uh, but we generally will not actually use tape in preparing our own slides. Feel free to pause the video here to take a closer look at the summary pages. Thanks for watching.